The Philadelphia Experiment, all about aliens. This video is sponsored by Real World Magic Shop. Find out more later in the video. The US government, and particularly the US Navy, have been included in a lot of allegations of conspiracy and cover-ups over the years. And it's not just any old cover-up either. I'm talking aliens, vehicles not made on this Earth, teleportation, time travel, and even a single unified theory of everything in the universe that can unlock real magical powers, like invisibility, material transformation, and all manner of weirdness. <coughs> After all, if you have a full understanding of how the universe works, there's really nothing you wouldn't be able to do. One allegation in particular centers on an experiment that you're just not going to believe. It's called the Philadelphia Experiment, and if you've seen the 1984 movie and think you know the full story, trust me, you don't. If you want to hear all the gory details, and some of them really are gory, and how these just might relate to UFOs and aliens, then click like right now, subscribe and ding that bell, because it's all coming up right after this. Hi, I'm Neil. In late 1955, a story emerged from an ex-merchant Navy seaman called Carl M. Allen. He claimed to be a witness of a military experiment where the US Navy attempted to use alien technology to make an entire warship completely invisible. It wasn't just any old story. This is a real story, a true story, probably, based on real people, real locations, real events, and even a real warship called the USS Eldridge. Based in Philadelphia's naval yard and conducted just off the shore in US waters, the American Navy tried to vanish a warship by essentially putting it into a kind of cloaking mode, a bit like James T. Kirk did to a Klingon bird of prey spaceship from Star Trek. Obviously, there are so many weird things about even this idea, but it gets weirder. What's strange is that the entire idea of the Star Trek cloaking device first appeared in the 1986 movie Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, and it uses a way of bending light so that solid objects can become invisible to the electromagnetic spectrum. There's some speculation over whether this was inspired by the Philadelphia Experiment. After all, the Philadelphia Experiment movie was released only in 1984, so two years before and the story itself, you know, the book from 1955, originally centred on using alien technology to do exactly that. So, in 1955, an anonymous package sent by Carl M. Allen arrived at the US Office of Naval Research entitled Happy Easter. It contained a book called The Case for the UFO, Unidentified Flying Objects by Morris K. Jessup. Scribbled in the margins of pretty much every page was a story or annotation in multiple pens and what appeared to be the handwriting of multiple people. What was claimed within this book was really odd. What was claimed within this book was not only a top secret classified account of advanced military technology, but also the aftermath of the experiment and some of the side effects that this had on the crew aboard the USS Eldritch itself after they attempted to make the warship completely invisible. So how does this relate to aliens? Well, I don't mean to be a tease here, but there is so much that went on according to this story that it's kind of hard to know where to begin. They were trying to bend light around solid matter using refraction and this unified field theory. At least that's what it tried to do, because according to Carl M. Allen, the experiment was only a partial success. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back in time. <laughs> Whoa! Not me. Around October 28, 1943, the US military reportedly conducted an experiment to make an entire warship invisible, and it was all reported in that book that was uncovered in 1955. The book Alan presented claimed to belong to the naval research organization that just didn't officially exist. It centered on alien technology that was later linked to alien spacecraft, and if you've seen the video about time travel, linked up here, you'll start to see how all of this links together. The proposed benefit of the invisibility experiment experiment was obvious. Set against the backdrop of World War II, the book claims that the US had in its possession the unified field theory of Albert Einstein. This theory is, as yet, unknown to mainstream science, but physicists are still trying to work out that theory of everything. Now, if we can truly understand all of the physical world and how gravity works, how we can control it, what antimatter and dark energy is, and how the quantum and macro worlds interact, and how to explain both using the same model, we could create machines and technology that could exploit this new understanding to do almost anything that you can imagine. 
we'd kind of become gods. So Alan provided a whole book of handwritten notes chronicling what he claimed was an experiment which would provide the first step in this direction. According to the book, on the 28th of October 1943, the USS Eldritch, a warship in the US Navy, was to become invisible. The time came, the crew was prepared, and the experiment began. The book claims that the ship had generators on board that could bend light. Well, you may remember that I did a video about Bob Lazar a few weeks ago, check that out, linked up here. Were they using the same technology? Well, perhaps. After all, Bob Lazar said that the US government had this technology for a very long time and couldn't fully understand it. He said that in the he also said some other stuff. I'll get back to that in a minute. So the USS Eldritch was sat in the waters just off the coast of Philadelphia Naval Yard when the generators started up and the warship did indeed vanish. Except that it wasn't still there just bobbing around Philadelphia, cloaked. Eyewitness testimony says that a green cloud descended and the ship vanished from view. <laughs> When the cloud dispersed, the ship had gone, but there was no time for it to have sailed away, and it wasn't invisible though. The thing had actually teleported. It's the earliest example that we know of of anything that big being transported or teleported instantaneously to another place in space and time. And I know that that sounds mad. And if you don't believe me, I get it, but it gets weirder. With Halloween and Christmas fast approaching, perhaps you're in need of some awesome potion decorations to make your life more magical. The Real World Magic Shop has a wide selection of handmade potions, from little potion bottles of transportation powder to love potions like this one. Real World Magic Shop stock original and unique potions. Check out our fire whiskey or this awesome Wolfsbane potion. For a limited time, you can also get 10% off using the code POTION10, which is this one here. These really are the very best and most authentic looking handmade potion bottles I've ever seen. So check them out now and I've put a link just down in the description in case you want to get your very own. Where were we? Ah yes, so the US Navy's just made a warship vanish. Well done US Navy. But unlike simply blowing it up or sinking it, the USS Eldritch was perfectly fine, thank you very much. You see, the ship wasn't there in Philadelphia anymore, but it did suddenly appear, in a cloud of green smoke I might add, somewhere else. In Norfolk, Virginia, a large ship had just appeared as if out of nowhere. No, no, this was a warship. The USS Eldritch had been teleported around 200 miles and it stayed there for several minutes before it was just teleported back. Except that wasn't the only weird thing to have happened. Clearly, the invisibility experiment had gone a bit wrong. And it gets weirder. And yes, that is my new catchphrase. The crew aboard the USS Eldritch weren't quite the same. Some of them had become insubstantial. And I don't mean that they'd lost weight. I mean that they were described as intangible, meaning that they had very little physical presence and they were able to walk through walls. Yeah, seriously. There were reports of people trying to do this for a few minutes, but when the effects wore off, they were stuck inside bulkheads, the hull and other solid objects. If they were lucky, they'd only have a hand or an arm stuck. If not, their whole body might be encased like Han Solo from Star Wars. Then there was the person who rematerialized inside out. I know, it's pretty scary, isn't it? And perhaps weirdest of all was the time travel. Yeah, you heard that right too. This is where renowned hairdo Albert Einstein gets involved again. He coined the term unified field theory. And the idea is that electromagnetism and gravity are essentially the same thing. That's not been proven yet. But assuming that he's right, and the US government knew how to do this and how this relationship worked, they could, in theory, create something to counteract gravity as I've said in previous videos. If you can control gravity, you control space. And if you control space, you can control time. Of course, if you look on Wikipedia about the Philadelphia experiment, you'll see in nearly every paragraph that things are contradictory and unsubstantiated. It's almost like they're saying it too much. But several witnesses have surfaced and each say that the experiment did indeed happen. Although the film version was pretty much a fictionalized version of it, obviously. Generally speaking, when it comes to alien abduction stories, we're talking green lights, green smoke, and little green men. So much green. <laughs> so I guess the green cloud is probably the best way to explain it. But when trying to explain how the metal of the ship fused with the bodies of the crew, that's something a little bit harder to explain. 
Bob Lazar said in the 1980s that the US government had been trying to work out how to use this alien propulsion technology that they had had for many, many years and probably decades. He said that in 1989, and that there had been many deaths and a big cover-up. So was the Philadelphia experiment a cover-up? Alien abductions of humans from their beds often feature the people passing through walls and through ceilings and roofs. See my video on passing through walls linked up here. But to do this, did they dream it? Are they astral projecting? Or did the aliens already have this technology and have they mastered it? After all, it's highly unlikely that a super intelligent alien race would embed people inside walls. Unless, of course, it's April Fool's Day, in which case they probably find it a hilarious <laughs> prank. Many people say that there are US agents within the Hollywood film industry, making aliens more accessible, spreading propaganda and misinformation about historical events to muddy the waters. Is that what happened with the Philadelphia experiment? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, please click that like button. It tells YouTube that it was a good video and more people should see it. It would really do me a favor. Please subscribe and ding that bell. By dinging the bell, it alerts you every time I go live or upload anything. And a massive shout out to these amazing people. These are my patrons and members from Patreon. Patreon and YouTube. They help me out so much. You can become one of these awesome people using the links down below from only £1.99 per month. I'll be back next time with some more magical awesomeness, but until next time, as always... Stay Stay magical. Magical. The Philadelphia Exper... <laughs> if you want to hear all the gory details, and some of them really are gory... I've got some spit on my lip. <laughs> At least that's what it tried to do, because according to... <coughs> Come on, I, I don't feel like a teenager with a broken voice. <laughs> around October 28th... Around October the 28th on... In... On? On? What? It contained a book called the US... No, it didn't. It centred on technology that was later linked to alien spacecraft. Spacecraft? Crust? Space crust. Like a toast. The proposed benefit of this invili was sat in the waters just off the coast of Pennsylvania Naval Yard when... No, it wasn't. Not Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, wasn't it? Duh. Please subscribe and ding that bell. By dinging that bell, it alert... <laughs>